All right, guys, before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel in this video so you can watch more of my videos in the future. Now let's talk Jazz Nuggets. All right, guys, what an absolutely dominant, dominant performance from Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz. Absolutely shellacked Denver, especially in that second half where they just were hitting every single shot. It was fantastic. Uh, we always obviously try to talk about both teams. The player you really got to give credit to for, for Denver is Michael Porter Jr. That guy is an absolutely like remarkable, incredible, unbelievable shooter. I mean, he takes that corner three, and if he's open, that's a layup. That guy is unreal with his ability to make shots. You know you're... You know someone is a master at something when they make it look incredibly easy, when you just expect them to succeed at things that other players just don't quite, you know, they can't just do, you know? His shooting from that three-point line is unbelievable, and he's 6'10", so he is always going to be able to get that shot. He just, one of the incredible talents that some of these great shooters has is an ability to shoot the ball in traffic, an ability to shoot with great form and release, whether you're guarded or you have a smaller player on you. Because he's 6'10", and because he's unfazed by who it is that's guarding him, most, most defenders, he just rises and fires and buries it. Tonight, Michael Porter Jr. was 6 for 9 from 3. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. His ability to shoot is out of this world. Now, his defense is poo. It's really bad. It stinks. It makes, it's bad. It's really bad. And the Jazz hunted Michael Porter Jr. on his defense. So if he wants to get to that next step, he needs to become at least an average defensive player. You know, a lot of these people say you got to improve your defense. You don't need to be, you know, uh, an elite defensive player. You don't need to be that. When you're a, when you're that type of offensive player, you've just got to become an average defensive player. Can you get good enough that you can at least stay in front of most people? There's players you're not going to stay in front of. Like not everyone can stay in front of Russell Westbrook. No one can. You know, if anyone's expecting you to be able to do that, good luck finding some anyone who can do those things. Uh, to be able to not foul Harden all game long. That's just not something everyone is good at. Or, or you know, guarding LeBron James. Like, good luck. Not everyone can do that. But if you can become an average defender where you can guard, you know, a good amount of players in the NBA at, an, at a good enough level and force stops here and there, but then hit shots at that level on the offensive end, that makes you elite. That's what you need to be. And he can become that over time. At least you hope, you know, because of the injury history, you never know. But, man, his shooting is in incredible. The other player for the 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 Nuggets that you, you always got to mention is Jokic. Uh, tonight, Jokic was pretty solid again, 10 for 21 uh, from the field. He was, let's see, he only took two threes, which I guess for Utah is kind of a win. He was one for two from them. And that's probably Rudy Gobert running out to him. But he hit, like, a bunch of threes last game against Utah. So... It's one of those games where he he scored 28 points was tw 28 points on 21 shots. Pretty good. 11 rebounds and 6 assists. It's a nice game from Jokic, but I would say the Utah Jazz will take that any game. I mean, that's that's going against Rudy Gobert, so you you know, kind of a wash with what Rudy Gobert pro produced, but it's pretty impressive what Jokic is able to do on the best defender in the NBA. He really does put up points, and he does score, and he's shown and proved a lot of things this series, that he is a legit scorer in the NBA. He's a unique scorer, but he's a scorer, and he can do it. And then Jamal Murray, who was the savior for the Denver Nuggets last game, tonight not quite as big, 14 points on 6 for 13. That's the Royce O'Neal effect. Last game, Royce O'Neal was in foul trouble. Tonight, uh, they switched Royce on to Jamal, although I can't remember if if it's all game because I I'm sure Royce guarded him at times last game but this game Royce did a better job of staying out of foul trouble and it really showed because Jamal Murray just did not have quite the same effect that he did last game he still was relatively efficient 46 from the field and 50 percent from three but just a better job overall by Royce O'Neal guarding him than maybe Ingles did the last at the end of the game now for the Utah Jazz basically they went supernova absolutely ridiculous play and we talked about this last video that the Denver Nuggets shot 54% from three last game and Utah shot 34% and it went to overtime so that's pretty that like you know that's a sucky loss for Utah last game because really they were like one of those you know there was a lot of small little plays that could have gone Utah's way to win that game although they did get like a lucky Jordan Clarkson crazy three you know it was just a very close game 
but Utah just was 20% less percentage wise than the Nuggets from three, and they still went to, to overtime. Uh, tonight, the Nuggets did not shoot 54% from three, but they still shot 48%. Actually, that's kind of amazing. Utah just found a way to score. Utah scored 45% from three by the end of the game, but I think at one point they were shooting like 56 until the, the backups um, came in in garbage time. Just an incredible per performance by the Jazz. And it all starts with Donovan Mitchell, who was just a maestro out there. He has taken that step that everyone hoped. Now, I know that it's Denver's defense, which is wet toilet paper. It's not good. So... But it's great to see Donovan Mitchell doing these things against just a bad defense. He is like, they are they were double teaming him, and he found open guys. He was he was attacking when he got the wrong when he got the bad mismatch. He was just incredible start to finish, and his shooting has just been become next level. Like he's becoming a little bit automatic with a lot of these shots. He's just you, there's just not a lot. You can't say anything bad about Donovan Mitchell. He's been absolutely superstar level. Uh, one of the best players in the in the playoffs right now. At, probably the best player in the playoffs, actually, now that I think about it, in this series. 57 points in game one. Tonight, uh, Donovan Mitchell was 30 points, but he was 10 for 14 from the field, 71%. Six for seven from three. That is out of this world numbers. Uh, and that's the thing you've got to hope that the Jazz get Conley back because I don't know if Mitchell's going to keep up that shooting. Uh, he's showing that that pull-up three is pretty fantastic. And he hit his threes last game at like 40-something percent. So that three is falling for him. And he is just attacking at the right times. He's making the right passes. His, I think it was Ben Dowsett on Twitter, he showed some of the PNR numbers. The PNR with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell is like 1.6 points per possession. It is flamethrowers it is just torching the the Denver Nuggets they have no answer for it and one of the reasons that it's going so great is that Mitchell is attacking with those pick and rolls he's attacking he's attacking Jokic he's attacking Michael Porter Jr. they're switching switching him off of Torrey Craig and he is making the right reads so if they actually do a good job of defending him Mitchell is making the pass he has to make that he wasn't making last season and the season before he's making the right plays and it is absolutely torching the nuggets and the nice thing and we talked about this last video is the supporting cast made their shots this game so Royce O'Neal who was I mean if anyone else deserves credit for this win after Donovan Mitchell it's Royce O'Neal Royce O'Neal was an absolute beast tonight go watch that game again and watch all the plays he makes he makes winning play after winning play after winning play he guards one of their best players Jamal Murray and then on the other end he's rebounding the ball now tonight uh, Royce O'Neal had seven rebounds his rebound numbers have gone up since he's taken off in the bubble in the taking kind of that main four man duties in the bubble his rebounding have, has gone up he is making man rebounds right now unbelievable but what, what else is exciting is he was three for four from three, shooting with confidence. And you shoot with confidence about, about against bad defenses like Denver, but he was hitting those shots. I mean, it's nice to see him shooting that with confidence and burying it. Uh, eight assists for Royce O'Neal. So he dang near had a triple-double tonight with his play. Royce O'Neal was an absolute monster next to Donovan Mitchell tonight. He was making the right play every time, whether it was shooting the three, rebounding the ball, or passing it to an open shooter or cutting a uh, guy to the rim. That one pass he made from where Donovan Mitchell cut to the rim and and Royce like thread the, threaded the needle to to Donovan Mitchell was fantastic. He also had that alley oop to Mitchell who hung in the air and and made it. Just just fantastic stuff from Royce O'Neal. I cannot say how great he played tonight. I am so impressed with Royce O'Neal. And what he has become as a player. If you are not a fan of Royce O'Neal, you are not a fan of good basketball players who help you win games. Because that's what he does. Big body, defender, has a motor all game long. Makes the right plays, hits threes, defends. What's not to love? And he's getting even better, it seems like. Just his ability to pass. Uh, he's not like an elite shooter because he's basically a spot-up three-point shooter. You know, he had that little sidestep. was a night for that corner three he made, which was a nice thing to, to see. But he's not a pull-up three-point shooter, which is what the elite shooters are. But when you have a guy that can just spot up like that, when he takes an open three and, and makes it with consistency, that's fantastic. And you are only going to see his confidence grow as the series goes on.
Uh, you've got to give credit to Rudy Gobert, who had a bigger impact today. Those numbers from from uh, Jokic, like I mean, he still got the 28 points, but at one point it was like 15 points on 14 shots for Jokic. Rudy was Rudy tonight, and that block made my mind explode. I had to I had to clean myself after that shot that shot block from Rudy on on uh, Jokic, and De- Denver Nuggets Twitter. Maybe pull back on the best center in the NBA because your center can't guard anything or anyone. Rudy Gobert tonight, 19 points for Rudy Gobert on 7 for 10 from the field. Jokic can't do anything with Rudy Gobert, and he definitely can't do anything with with Donovan Mitchell. They are exploiting him every single play. And I joked on Twitter a little bit because I'm trying to troll these Denver fans and some of these Denver bloggers and nationals who just called Jokic the best center in the NBA without any sort of, like, really backup. Because guess what? This game is played on two ends of the floor. It's not just an offensive game. If you don't play defense... You're going to lose basketball games, and that's what we saw tonight. Denver cannot guard, and it starts with Jokic, who cannot guard a lamppost. He cannot guard me, all right? He can't guard any of you. Any of you able to drive to a rim or hit a jump shot? Jokic cannot guard you then. And so it's just like that's just – that's an important thing to remember. And so when, when Rudy Gobert is guarding Jokic, who, by the way, is fantastic on the offensive end, but if he can't stop Rudy Gobert – or Donovan Mitchell at any point during the game, and they can just go and do whatever at the rim, that's not the best center in the NBA to me. He's At that point, you're Carl Anthony Towns with a handle, all right, and can't shoot as well as Carl Anthony Towns. So what's the difference, honestly? What's the difference? You've got to be able to defend in this league to be an elite player. Kawhi is not what Kawhi is if he doesn't defend how he does. And LeBron isn't who LeBron is if he isn't able to ratchet up that defense when it matters most. You have to be able to defend. And that's what Rudy Gobert does. And that's why he gives you a chance to win. And when you've got someone like Donovan Mitchell who is blossoming into this absolute superstar, that's the stuff that wins you playoff games. The other guy, we've talked about these these three guys the other guy you got to talk about and i know you'll mention it in my mentions jordan clarkson was big time tonight jordan clarkson did what the jazz needed him to do he comes in and the jazz need him to score and score at an efficient level and that's what he did jordan clarkson tonight was 50 percent from the field he was 44 percent from three he was uh let's see three assists for jordan clarkson that's massive for him i mean he's starting to move the ball a little bit and play within the system and make the right play you know, he's still, his job is to still just shoot the ball, shoot the ball, Jordan, because that's what you're good at. That's what you're good at. And that's what the jazz need to do. And he gives effort on the defensive end. He's not a good defender, but like we talked about with MPJ, the effort is there. And if Jordan Clarkson can defend at an average level at like a good enough level, even at like a, just like not great, but like, at least you're not horrendous. Like uh Moutier is at times, my gosh, then you are like, you're playing fantastic. And so it's just nice to see Jordan Clarkson be able to come in and just cook. And there's not a lot that, that Denver can do. And guess what? Mike Conley might be back next game. So you're going to have to defend instead of Moutier minutes, which are Mayday Moutier minutes. They drive me insane. Tonight he had a few moments that were nice, but man, he can't defend at all. I, it would be incredible to see how Jokic and Moutier defend each other because my heck, it would be a Toro uh, competition with those two. But Jordan Clarkson's defending at an at a at an average level, and then if you upgrade from Moutier to Conley with these bench minutes, and so you don't even have Moutier to worry about. Now you're just like, you've got the worst thing you've got is like Tony Bradley, who is like not making enough impact, but at least he had a few moments tonight. Uh, he had a dunk that was nice. But if you have Mike Conley setting those guys up and making shots, Tony Bradley's going to play better with Mike Conley. George Yang is going to play better with Mike Conley because guess what will happen? He'll get shots that he can take. So whew, I don't want to call this because anything can happen and the Jazz can go cold and who knows, chemistry things happen. But, man, Denver can has, has not shown an ability to guard Donovan Mitchell at the very least and then the Jazz in general. Because guess who else was incredible tonight? Joe Ingles shot nine threes again tonight. Nine threes. Last game it was 12, and he's hitting them at over 40%. And what the good defenses do is they usually take Ingles out of the game because they know how good he is of a shooter and passer. Joe Ingles was team leading plus 31 for this game. 
He was fantastic. And if you have Joe Ingles taking, like, averaging 10 and a half threes a game, that is such a good thing for the Jazz, I can't tell you. Utah is just bombing away right now, and they are making it. As a team, they shot 45%. It was higher during the hardest points of the game when Denver was really trying. My goodness. You know, uh, Utah's going to shoot about 30, 40% from three in this series because Denver can't guard them. They can't. So if Utah can just defend and defend well when Conley comes back, they're going to put up even more points. You just hope Conley can, like, play at a high level when he comes back. I know he's been up and down a little bit. If he does, whoo, tough stuff for Denver because, my goodness, this Jazz team is rolling on all cylinders. And I really hope that Donovan Mitchell is still the focal point when Conley comes back, that Conley plays off of Mitchell because Mitchell has shown that he is just absolutely an assassin right now. It's time to get excited for Jazz basketball. The other thing I'm going to be excited to see what happens with John, Jawan Morgan because that guy is playing – with heart and he's he's defending and he's actually uh, affecting the game with hitting shots and rebounds and things like that big fan guys that's all i got to say like and subscribe to this channel i will talk to you later